Yo, what's up guys, Jason Ma the Magician, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you the infamous four ace trick. This is a routine that I put together a few years ago. It's fun, it's a lot of fun, it's good for social media, it's good for live people, it's good for, it's just fun. Look, I could hype this up for the rest of my life, but let's just get straight into showing you what the trick looks like right now. All right, it's finally time to share with you the four ace trick. I have to put these on because it makes me look smarter than who I am. Check it out. We got four aces, one, two, three, four of those suckers right there. And all you've got to do is pay close attention to these aces. They're going to be flipped face down and then placed into the center of the deck. I want you to see as fairly as possible, each one going in one at a time, all aces into the center of the deck and in different areas. Look at that, huh? Four aces separated throughout the pack. This will make it impossible to manipulate the cards. All you've got to do is pay close attention because I'm going to press an ace in like so. I'll even press in a second one and then I snap twice. And then two aces will rise through to the top of the deck. How cool is that, man? And the frames have nothing to do with it because look, they're not even real. <laughs> of course, check this out. You can see there is no ace on the top of the deck. And yet when I press an ace in and snap the fingers, one of them rises through to the top. Isn't that freaking nuts, man? This, of course, leaves us with lucky number last. That one there is going to be in the middle. You can see there are no marks. There are no breaks. The only way to get that ace to come to the top is to wave and snap. And Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait. It's actually, sorry. It's just a wave. It's just a wave. It'll come through to the top. That way, when I put it into the center of the deck, I can snap the fingers and it rises back through again. And that is the four ace trick. And these... Ow! <laughs> I just poked myself in the eye. But the trick is pretty good. Now all you're gonna need to be able to do this trick is a regular pack of cards. No gimmicks. You're also gonna have to learn the double lift, the Victoria control, and the 4 for 4 switch. Now I'm gonna teach them all in this video, but the Victoria control, if you need more in depth on that one, I have a whole entire tutorial on this channel that you can check out to really get it down. Now, before we dive into the tutorial, make sure that you smash like if you haven't already and subscribe. I'm actually going off right now. I am going to possibly hit a million this year. And all it takes is for you to just click a little button at the bottom of the screen there. You gotta smash the like, you gotta click that subscribe button, and then you gotta comment below how much you love hanging out with your boy, Jace. <laughs> all right, now for educational purposes, let's just start off with learning the four for four switch. It looks like this. I have four cards. These are all just random cards. They're not super important. Important. And when I place them on the top of the deck and snap the fingers, they will all become aces, baby. Freaking aces, man. So in order to do it, let's just start off with the basics, all right? You're going to have the four aces, and you want to do this. I like to out-jog them like this. You see that? So we've got like two down here and two up here, but they're like interweaved. This way it takes up the most amount of surface area. You can actually hide the deck. That'll help make the move easier to conceal. Now in this hand here, you're going to separate four cards and you're going to have your pinky holding them separate from the deck. So I've got four cards here. I've got these ones nice and spread out. And what essentially is going to happen is I'm going to, on this angle, you have to do it on this angle to cover up, but from the guilty angle, it looks like this. I'm going to cover up. I'm going to use my thumb to kind of push these open so that they contact this finger here. I'm going to place all of these just on top like this, and then I'm going to close it all together like that. And that is more or less the 4 for 4 switch. Now, when you're holding these cards, you're just holding them in a natural grip. You have the 4 broken separate here. Use your thumb. So if I'm holding them in the break like this, if I let go, it'll create this gap here. I use my thumb to just push these out. Right? I push them out, and then I extend my fingers here to catch them here. I place the rest of the cards on top. I close everything together like the pages of a book. And that is the four for four switch. Isn't that easy? That's the easiest part of the whole routine. <laughs> now up next, we've got the double lift to the way that I like to do it, the special flicky double lift. Let me look, have a look. All right, now this double lift, all you've got to do is you take the cards, I snap them out like this. There's a, a two right here. And then when I snap the fingers, it changes into a freaking five, man. That's so cool. That's the double lift my way. <laughs> now this isn't gonna be easy like the four for four switch. This one is a little bit knacky. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the deck like this as the dealer's grip. Three fingers along this side, pointer at the front, thumb on the opposite side, keeping everything nice and neat. I use my thumb to push across two cards. I dig the pinky underneath, I pull the two cards back. Now, 
I have the cards in a break, ready for the double lift. And this is how I do it. My thumb is gonna contact the back and these fingers are gonna contact the front. Now the way I'm doing is I'm using this middle finger to contact it so that these two can curl in behind it like this, okay? So these curl in, look at this. They curl in behind it like this, both of them. You need both of them. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull back with this in this middle finger here so that these two fingers can sort of take control and then I let go of the thumb and it creates this kind of taco. See how my fingers are holding it in kind of a taco way? So what happens is I pick it up like this, thumb and middle finger. These two curl in, they create the pressure allowing me to pinch it like this. Then I release with the thumb and the card will snap over. Now the reason why I hold it with these fingers is because that taco effect will help keep the cards from splitting. If I don't use all three of those fingers, what'll happen is the cards will split. Well, that didn't split, wow. Maybe I'm just really good. But the point is, you wanna have that break, pick them up like so, curl these two in, creating the pressure, and then they flick out. And that right there is a perfect double. I then just place that on the top, all in a single motion. So you want it all to be in a single motion, okay? I push across, I get the break, I pick it up, Fingers curl in, I flick and place it down at the same time using these fingers to kind of square it up should it have split by mistake. Now to turn it back over, when I place it down, you may notice I pick it up, I do the flick, I place it down, but my pinky maintains the break. This means that when I want to turn it over, all I have to do is pinch the corners here. I slide it down the length of the deck and I turn it over like the pages of a book. And that right there is the double lift Jason's way. Now don't feel disheartened about that move. I know I make it look easy, but it is a little bit finicky and knacky. It's gonna take you a little bit of practice, but I believe in you, all right? If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me, I am just a perfectly average human. I'm not that great. And if I can do it, you can do it because you're amazing. Look at that, seven minutes in, we're up to the last technique. Now this one is the hardest technique of the lot, but after you learn this, I'm just gonna show you the routine and I can go through it quickly because you know all the moves. All right, the Victoria control. So this is what it looks like. If we had a card selected, in this case, the four of clubs, it goes in the center of the pack and you can actually see every single card is different and yet that card rises through to the top. That is the Victoria control in a nutshell. Now I do have a tutorial right here. There's a link in the description below. This gives you every single detail that you possibly need to master the technique. But I am gonna go over it quickly in this video so that this whole video is just a complete video instead of making you jump around like some other YouTubers do. Cause I hate that, man, I hate it. All right, so to do the Victoria control, there is one thing that you need to learn first. One is this. This is called the waterfall. Now to do this is not difficult, okay? You're gonna hold it in this grip. I know this looks weird and you can see I'm holding it the top thirds of the deck. I'm gonna use these fingers to apply pressure and I'm gonna riffle my thumb across the back of the cards, right? I hold them upright and I hold them slightly on an angle like this. I'm gonna riffle my thumb across the back of the deck and that will allow the cards to kind of fall one by one. That is the waterfall. It's not too difficult to do. You should be able to learn that fairly quickly, but it's necessary for the control. All right, so for the control, you're gonna hold the deck in the dealer's grip, which you learned earlier. You take the card that you wanna control, you curl the pointer underneath, you riffle along the edge until about halfway, and you just insert the card in the middle. Now to push it in, I'm gonna push it in on this corner closest to the thumb. I'm gonna push it all the way in on an angle so you can see it peeking out the bottom here. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna, when it gets in and it hits the pinky, I'm gonna re-grip it in that same grip that we did the waterfall in. I'm gonna re-grip it like this. I'm gonna use my other hand with the pinky and the thumb to kind of guide it through so that it can't be seen at the front anymore. You see here, it's kind of like hidden now, but it's peeking out the back. I'm then holding it like this. I re-grip with the pad here contacting the bottommost card and these other fingers are gonna grab that, that selection as tight as I can like this. Now, if I just lift the deck up, you'll see that those two cards are actually forming kind of like a V. You see that? They create like a V. And then I'm doing the waterfall into that V, allowing this card to come to the top. Now, where this control gets tricky is that when you put the card in on that angle, you re-grip so that you can do the waterfall. And I do the waterfall, like I'm gonna separate it so that that card comes out and do the waterfall. The, the way to make it look super smooth is that you wanna start the waterfall before the card splits out, you see? And eventually it will clear enough 
and then it is a cohesive move. Now, believe you me, I know that it's hard and it's really difficult to explain it quickly, but that is truthfully how you do the control. Now, the angle of the control is you kind of always do it to the side. So you put the card in on an angle, you do it to the side, same grip, and you just do the waterfall, allowing the cards to fall in front and hide that card that's riding up the backside there. Really do go and check out that tutorial because it will help you immensely, but that is a rough overview of what you need to do the move. And now finally, I can teach you the entire routine because you know all of the moves now. All right, so for the routine, you wanna start off with the aces on top of the deck. You want the ace of spades to be on the bottom of the pile. It's a personal preference for me. I think you should do it too. <laughs> and then you wanna get a break under just three cards on the top. All right, so you're holding the four aces, three cards on the top. Now remember to jog them like this so that you get this nice big space and you're gonna do a three for four switch. Exactly the same move. You start off with it. I have four aces here and then you do the move. We're gonna put those face down like so and put them into the center of the deck and you do it one at a time, nice and fairly. And the last one you wanna show it, the ace of spades, place that in the middle. Now this is the situation you now have three random cards and then the ace of spades in the middle of the deck and on the top you have three aces. So that's the situation. Now if you push with your finger on that ace as you turn the deck over, it will reduce and almost completely eliminate the risk of you flashing a different card, but you'll be able to do this and say, look, four aces in the center of the deck, push again and turn it over. And then you're going to say that they're going to rise to the top using the power of magic or whatever you want to do. So you push two in and then you wave and snap or you cast the shadow or whatever you want to do. But two of them will rise to the top as if by magic. It's crazy, man. Now, the next one, before you reveal it, you say, I'll do it again. But you can see and you do the double lift that you learn. You can see that there is no ace on the top. You then take that, you turn it face down, you press an ace into the deck, you snap the fingers, and then you reveal, you pick up the single card, you reveal that an ace has risen back to the top again. And that leaves you, of course, with just the last ace, the ace of spades. Now the ace of spades, you wanna to say to them, is the most difficult. It goes in the middle, you can see every single card is different. And then I like to do the double lift again, like this. I do the double lift and I say, it's not on the top just yet, but it's when you snap that it rises through to the top. And that right there is the entire routine in a single take. Now you may notice that in the video performance, I did a color change where I showed the uh, jack or whatever and I changed it into the ace. Then I put it in the middle and I have it come back to the top. That is not a necessary finish, it's unnecessary. But if you wanna add that, I implore you to check out this tutorial. It's called the low key change, baby. That'll also be in the description below. Look, you can just add that on at the end of the routine if you want to. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. This is a full routine, comprehensive and difficult to do, but I believe that you can do it. And if you do do it uh, and you do it well, send me a video, like message me on Instagram. It's, that's in the description below as well, man. <laughs> Call me Bucky, lucky that I'm innocent uh, If I didn't have no morals, I'd be menacing